Hi, yeah. Matt. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. How are you? I'm good. It's, it's finally sunny here in Cheltenham. I know. So it's quite I'm, hot today, actually. It's, it's lovely. It's yeah. warm. Really good. So I'm very excited to have you here. I've been watching the show. I've been watching it for years, but this season has just been so exciting. And good, it's yeah. lovely to, to have you here to chat about it. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, it's an honour. Thanks so much for having me. No, no problem at all. And how cool. have you been finding it? Um, I've been finding it. I, I've been really enjoying it, actually, since it's come out. And, um, yeah, I've had a lot of... Um, positive feedback so far, yeah. which has been really nice, and um, yeah, been, been been thriving at the moment. Exciting! So before we get to all of your questions that you've sent in, we're just going to have some of my questions, if that's okay. Let's do it. Yeah, fire away. <laughs> my first one is: How did you get into <clears throat> interior design? Um, so I've always kind of like uh, art's always been my thing. Art and design in school, college—that's always where my head was at. What my passion was. Um, and then when I was looking for a uni to go to, uh, I wanted to go to uni, but I didn't really know what I wanted to study. Yeah. I didn't want to do art at uni because I thought if I was doing, if I went to uni to study art, I thought if I want to make art, I'll make it anyway. Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to, to learn something. And I've always had a kind of passion for interiors um, and 3D art and installations. And I looked at a couple of um, interior design courses and I just fell in love with that. And um, yeah, kind of never looked back since really. Oh, that's lovely. And how have you found your career has progressed since I've, being at uni? Yeah, so since I, I learned a lot at uni, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed uni and I'm like, I'd love to go back and do another <laughs> couple of years if I could just for fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's progressed well, I've, uh, especially since the show's come out, mm. things have really kind of took off and um, yeah, things are going good at the moment. Exciting. And for anybody out there who is wanting to get into interior design and they're looking at starting their career, have you got any kind of tips and tricks how to start out? So I think uh, if you don't have any interior design experience, I think what's really key is to uh, figure out your style, figure out your like niche, figure out what you like. So I'd recommend for a complete beginner, someone who's just wanting to get started is to just research a lot. Mm. Visit kind of cool, um, cool kind of trendy cafes and restaurants and hotels and kind of put a mood board together of things that you like. Mm. And then that'll like help you get an idea of what your style is and where you're trying to go, mm. um, which I think is really important because it's, it's easy to kind of see an image that's really cool and emulate that. And then you kind of can just bounce around and get lost. Mm. So it's really important to, yeah, find find your niche and find the direction that you want to go with in interior design. Mm. So yeah, I just recommend research and put together a mood board um, and a kind of folder or lookbook of images and things that you like and what you want to design. And I think from there, once you have more of a direction, uh, you'll be able to, yeah, it, it, it'll be easier to find work and mm. start making steps towards that direction. I suppose figure out what your signature style yeah. is and yeah, yeah. you know is it just texture is it pattern or what what it is yeah it yeah is. yeah and then what you want to design because yeah. there's all different types of design which mm. require different skills and different kind of needs mm. within the design uh, so yeah i think figuring out where you want to go is mm. key before you start kind of making any big big moves that's interesting because I've never really thought about that actually, but a home design is very different to a hotel yeah. and restaurant is very different to, yeah, to yeah, cafe. Yeah, so yeah. how do you kind of marry up those types of projects, I suppose? Um, yeah, I, I mean, so it's just like lots of research, mm. I think, is key and not going uh, into it head first. Mm. The design process is really important. Yeah. So just chilling out, taking a step back and doing research first, collecting mm. mood boards, images, samples, and this, because that's a fun bit as well. The design yeah. process is fun. So just don't, don't jump into anything too quickly. All right, okay, mm. you know, starting a project. All right, I like that. I like that sofa. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to put that in. Yeah. You know, take a step back. Just get loads of images together, mm. samples that you like, put them together, figure out what you like. Mm. And uh, yeah, the design process is key, really. That's amazing. And do you have any particular areas that you prefer to? Because for me, I, I prefer designing a bedroom. Yeah. And that's where I really, yeah, really yeah, yeah. come alive. Have you got 
a particular one? I think where I want to go is towards hotels and mm. hospitality design, commercial design. Yeah. So maybe like boutique shops or boutique hotels, restaurants, cafes, mm. um, places where everyone can experience, if that yes. makes sense. Like anyone can go into a cafe or restaurant. Um, and I think creating like, I think what I like about commercial design, like a restaurant, for example, is people spend three hours in there max. Yes. So you can yeah. make it a bit more immersive, you can be a bit more creative and you can create something that you wouldn't find at home. Yeah. So I find you can be a bit more creative maybe in um, commercial spaces, but at the same time you have to make sure that it's practical. And functional and as functional. well. Yeah, so it's, yeah. again, I absolutely loved it when you and Rasheen did the cafe week. Yeah. And that was so interesting seeing both of you really think about that space. Like, how is it going to work on a functional basis? How are people going to experience that? And do you find that storytelling in commercial spaces really works? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, starting with what the brand is, mm. how do they work? And yeah, how, you know, yeah, the journey through the space mm. and, and like you say, the story, that is definitely really important. I loved the herbs. Yeah, the herbs. <laughs> yeah. such a good little add-on. I, I would just be sitting there eating mints yeah. if I was in just that Just put cafe. it in your drink and it's yeah, nice. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. on your food. So the cafe had a really strong ethos that they wanted to get mm. across in the design. Um, you know, they're non-profit, everything yes. goes to charity and they help out the local community a lot. So they've got a really good kind of ethos behind them. So on the tin, um, it was like that tin was the square peg tin. So I put ingredients and then their ethos. So it's like the ingredients for the, for like the, um, for the cafe. So, yeah. That is amazing. I absolutely thought it was such a genius idea having oh, something on the table that people can actually look at. And you know, you went, you wait for food. You're sitting mm. there. You're either looking at the menu for the seventh time, or but you've got something yeah. there that people. And it's such a clever. It smells nice as well. And it smells, it smells great. Nice, yeah. <laughs> and you can enjoy it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It was such a such a clever idea. Oh, so I appreciate that. Thank absolutely you. love that. And I can see that that's where really where your passion is is those commercial. Yeah. Spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Definitely. Thank you. And now we're on the topic of interior design masters. I really would like to ask, how has your journey been so far? Because you have gone on such an interesting journey from the nun cells yep. all the way through to this week's episode. It's been so interesting seeing yeah. your style really come through. Yeah, I mean, the journey's been been amazing i've loved it and each design was something that i haven't done before mm. and i found that really really fun and you know it's it's just been it was just fun really like the <laughs> the, the journey was so fun and having these challenges being given a budget um it was just like an opportunity to really explore and to, mm. to design stuff that you wouldn't get to do otherwise yeah I definitely would have struggled on the budget size. Yeah. Like, where do you even start with that? Especially when you've got, say, the big space of the zoo. Yeah. Where do you start with that small budget? So it's, it's, it is difficult working to the budget, really, really hard, but you have to really prioritise where mm. you want to spend the money. Mm. Um, and that depends brief to brief. Um, but, you know, in certain briefs, you have to prioritise money and do big spends mm. on things that's going to transform... the the space for the brief in that particular way mm. um so prioritizing is how you do it and also like really clever shopping facebook market yes. charity shops uh, things like that and um but yeah I, I don't usually do facebook market and stuff like that but there's i'm su surprised the amount of stuff you can get off there and really nice stuff designer furniture yeah. i got a few designer pieces off there for really cheap um but yeah it was uh it's definitely a challenge working mm. to the budget has it been a learning curve for you as a designer to kind of think of being very smart with how you're spending money and working to a budget for a space? Yeah, it's been a massively insightful and a huge learning curve mm. because it's given me the opportunity to put these things into practice. And in real life, you'd never get, you know, a week or two to start design source and finish a project yeah. so being able to fit in that much practice and that much of a short time of course there's going to be mm. a massive learning curve mm. and I think my style has evolved mm. quite a lot since the first episode and it kind of changes even more each episode because yeah. you know each design you learn something new yes. um, so yeah massive learning curve 
it's definitely been interesting seeing say the nun cells right at the beginning then going to ascot week how different those spaces are yeah. you've like gone to the challenge and you've done really well yeah. in actually adapting your style to that oh, how, thank you how has it been for you to kind of each week be challenged in that way and have to to think more about how you're going to use that space yeah i loved it to be honest <laughs> i absolutely loved it because like i mentioned before coming from uh, an art background mm. i loved just making things yeah. um and yeah just making things being creative and interior design is like for me it's the uh it's the biggest creative outlet mm. because you're doing so many different types <laughs> of things like i'm painting uh, upholstering sewing mm. um you know just doing a bit of carpentry doing like a, even like a bit of video editing afterwards and yeah. things like that you just it's yeah it's an amazing creative outlet so yeah, I think I've gone yeah. down a little way and spiralled it. I, I've loved seeing the upholstery and I'm so in awe of anybody out there that does upholstery. I, for me, I just find it so overwhelming, that big piece of fabric. How have you found getting into upholstery and using it in a, into a space? So I think I've been quite tactical with my upholstery <laughs> because I've only ever done rectangle shapes, yeah. which are really, <laughs> really easy to do. Um, if I was to do a chair or something like that, I would not know where to start. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think tactically picking <laughs> shapes that are really easy to do. And it was like in the last uh, um, episode, uh, flats. Yes. So that headboard, the reason why I did it kind of that big and wrapping round is because it was really easy to make, but you have a really kind of mm. big impact. So as opposed to something that's smaller, but if it's kind of more fiddly and it's got more intricate, intricate yeah. details, it may not be as, as impressive as a floor to ceiling mm. headboard, but it takes more skill to make. Yes. So I just wanted something that I could kind of, you know, not think about too much. Yeah. It's like wrapping a present, you know. I love so, it. So yeah, tactical, tactical. shape <laughs> decisions <laughs> is the key. <laughs> really love that with the flats. With when you walked into that bedroom and you had this massive headboard, that, it was almost like a envelopes cozy cave for yeah. a bedroom and I just thought as a young professional you would love to have someone that you can really unwind in and yeah. feel enclosed and just let the outside world yeah. go away so I was so impressed loved it absolutely you, yeah. loved that headboard Thank you. yeah I really wanted to create something that was just cocooning cozy and mm. just it's a place to sleep yeah. it's really soft sounds in there um and yeah, just comfy, soft walls. Yes, and it's definitely interesting adding texture to walls. Headboards, panelling, such a great idea, isn't it? Just yeah, to definitely. add dimension. Yeah, it just adds interest. Yeah. It just adds interest. And when everything sits together, mm. um, you don't even really notice it that much. I think when you, when the, when you do a design where something doesn't work, mm. it's easier to notice. Mm. But you know, if you can manage to kind of marry everything together quite nicely, it just, just works, just sits there quite nicely. Yeah. But yeah, that's people's uh, opinion, I suppose. Yeah. But. <laughs> I personally love panelling and upholstery, cool. so I'm a little bit biased. Have you got any just little tips and tricks for anybody who's thinking about doing headboards or upholstery, apart from choose an easy shape? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> apart from, it, yeah, so obviously, number one, choose an easy shape. Yeah. If you want to start off, pick pick a rectangle and pick, a, like, a forgiving fabric. Mm. Like, if you're doing, um, I don't know, like, I think some people, I, I would struggle with a check. Yes. Even though it's got lines to follow, yeah. it will show mistakes. Yes. So pick like a forgiving fabric, if yeah. that makes sense. Something where if it's a little bit warped or the fabric's not totally straight, mm. it doesn't look wrong. Yeah, you know? no, I get that. And just go for it. Like, yeah, trial and error. Yeah, trial and error. And it's, 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 like I say, a headboard is totally different to doing like a chair. Chair, so it's, yes. Yeah. Or like, you know, or you could do like the, the cushion of a stool, something yeah. simple. Just pick something simple and pick a forgiving fabric and go forgiving for it. Fabric. I love that. I'm going <laughs> to tag you in anything that I try now and you can, you can see for yourself. Let's do it. <laughs> so we have got so many questions coming in from you guys in the last couple of days. And so we're going to start straight in with Interior Design Masters. Let's and do it. what has been your favourite challenge so far? Uh, so I've genuinely enjoyed all of them. But I think if I had to pick a favourite, it would be cafes, yeah. purely because it's it's more in the direction that I'm trying to go. Commercial, mm. design, hospitality, 
so it's a step in the right direction. And uh, it was also really fun working with another designer that had a different style. Because yes. I feel like that's how it would more be in the real world. Mm. I feel that you rarely make all the design decisions yourself. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think my favourite would have to be Cafe's Week. It was so just overwhelming watching it and just seeing both you and Roisin create this beautiful space. Was there anything in there that you particularly thought that was my favourite bit? Um, it would be, my favourite bit would be the corner in the back. Yes. I just loved that. With it, and it felt like home because we put like the floor standing yeah. lamp, um, you know, with the herbs and it had the tiles and then yeah. the, uh, the cladding coming over it. So it was really just like a locked in, mm. cosy space and you're just you're kind of out of sight but mm. it was also quite cool because the mirrors on the wall you could see the uh you could see the till yeah so it's like if you're questioning whether to get up for another coffee you can just see <laughs> how busy it is but yeah that's that that was my favorite bit it was it was that whole little little space and there was that really tall yes. tree there which you found on facebook marketplace and uh it was just a great find because it gave height yes. to the room so yes. things were all different heights you had the you had the seat in and the table mm. then the lamp then the tree and it just kind of felt it felt nice in that corner so it that was, was my favorite bit amazing seeing that space come alive because you would have thought right next to the toilets you know you don't really want to sit yeah there. yeah yeah but actually i would love to sit there yeah. that was such a nice intimate cozy space that you can enjoy for a coffee with your friends or you know at, at, in the evenings with a couple of drinks, it was such a yeah. smart oh, decision. Thank you. Yeah, I do feel that me and Machine, uh, we did well with that with that corner, I think, especially yeah. with it being opposite the toilet, yeah. but <laughs> still somehow <laughs> was everyone's favourite place to sit. So, it's just yeah, amazing. Out. Cool. Do you find you struggle sometimes with thinking about spaces and how they're going to be used, or how do you overcome that? Um, I think, yeah, you, usually you would know you'd speak to the client about how the space mm. wants to be used if it's like mm. if it's a residential property you ask them what their hobbies are because mm. if you're doing the kitchen if you know they might like baking then you need to make sure you've got a big work service yeah. next to uh, the oven with you know what i mean you mm. kind of just figure out who's going to use the space and what the space is for and then you just base it off that mm. and like i said before if you take a step back yeah. and not think of like you don't i don't never think of color or texture or pattern that's always secondary mm. you just get the layout done and i find that is the easiest way to do it because that's what was so interesting with the cafe of think seeing your thought process of how you're going to functionally use that space and it was interesting that both the owners said about we want this area to be used up. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you really nailed it. Yeah. And it was just so interesting seeing how you adapted your thinking of like, this is the functionality yeah. and then do the pattern after. It's just yeah. such yeah, a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's just the way to do it for me. Yeah. I find it easy. So with all of your designs so far that we've seen on Interior yeah. Design Masters, where have you found your inspiration? Um, for each one? Well... Whatever. So it all depends brief to brief. Yep. So always start with the brief, the location, maybe a bit of local history, something like that to really kind of ground mm. the design to the location, which I think is important. Um, and I'll always, so I'll always start off if we're doing it vaguely, yeah. kind of covering <laughs> general basis. So yeah, start off with research, local history, um, things like that to make sure that the design is kind mm. of grounded. And then I'd work with the building to make mm. sure that it fits and it doesn't look like a kind of, like it's been covered up yes. in a way. It, yeah. I think everything, I think things feel nice when they feel purposeful. And um, yeah, so starting with the building, the architectural features in mm. it, not kind of covering up, but working with it, highlighting it and make something that fits. And then you kind of, yeah, design the space, the layout, and then you get into the fun bit. Yeah. How do I want people to feel? And then you, whacking the colour and texture and things like that afterwards. Amazing. And where did you get your inspiration with the nun cells? Because everybody yeah. had such an interesting signature style with that one. And it would, be, it would be really interesting to know how you got your inspiration of that space. So I started off by just looking at the room and starting off with, with the things that I think didn't work. Mm. So again, I didn't go into the style or colour or print or pattern or anything but that all came afterwards. Yeah. 
So I looked at what wasn't working in the room. I thought, okay, the the window is not putting in this much that much light. So I yeah. wanted to kind of open that wall and make that brighter. I thought it feels like a corridor. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the bed was on the shorter wall yeah. to make the room feel more boxy and less like less like a corridor. Yeah. Um, I wanted to use reflection to create because it was quite. When you walked into that room, it wasn't you could see everything mm. there wasn't any kind of like well, what's around the corner or what's through here it's just there bang that's it so i wanted to create a little bit of um what's the word uh like a little bit of kind of mystery yes. maybe yeah. so by using mirrors and reflection but recessing them as opposed yeah. to sticking them on the wall it looks more like a doorway or like yeah. a passageway through so when you walk in because the mirrors are recessed it's like oh what's through there yeah. it looks like kind of so you kind of create this mystery feels a bit bigger um and then when it came to styling it i just wanted to do my signature style mm. and that's usually quite brutalist and earthy shapes mm. hence the kind of the stone walls and the monochrome blocky mm. fabric that i got from you guys yeah. <laughs> um and yeah so that's that's kind of where I started, just working with the room, mm. trying to manipulate it to kind of change the way it feels mm. and things like that. I really loved when you did the textured wall. Yeah. I don't know, how, di how did you come up with that? That is such a genius idea of creating depth and texture to a wall that otherwise would have just been flat. Thanks, yeah. So yeah, that is, again, going back to the signature style. So I love texture and I like to dress mm. a room with texture. So um, kind of, playing around with the different uh, material mm. options. Um, and then, yeah, basically, I did actually do a video that I haven't posted yet of explaining how I did it. Oh! Um, but yeah. Coming soon. Coming soon, <laughs> that's it. But yeah, just like, basically, just, I was looking at panels, mm. uh, texture panels, wall panels, but they're all too expensive. Mm. Um, so I just thought I'd have to just make my own. And um, I think by kind of putting it on, kind of, bringing it out mm. and then brushing overwards it kind of create that embossed effect yes. as opposed to something coming out it was embossed which made to me made it look like a concrete or stone yes. slab but uh, you yeah. did it in such a way where it didn't feel very cold which is what i sometimes worry about if i love the industrial look of yeah. you using that in my own home and would it make a room look really cold but the way you did it it just felt quite Ooh. I think lighting's important as yeah. well. So I put some kind of nice yellowy warm lights either side of that main yes. strip, which made which gave a warm glow and it gave uh, it gave a glow throughout the height mm. of the room, which is quite nice. Um, and I also used um, all the lamps. So the lampshade and the lamp that I mm. used was coloured glass, so it's kind of like a stained glass window, oh, um, which kind of nods to the nun cells and nunnery yeah. things like that. And that gave quite a nice light, like round lights, I think. Mm. And I think if if the walls are a little bit more kind of cold and architectural, it does allow the furnished areas to feel more cosy. Mm. If just right. I do wish that I put in a few more cushions and mm. colour like colourful cushions, maybe some like Moroccan <laughs> style cushions and things like that, but budget. Yeah, but, of course, um, of course. But yeah. It's interesting that you say about lights because with the last episode of the flats, that was such a positive that mm. the different lights that you had and the different layers that you put them in. It wasn't just one standing light, it was lights at different areas. Yeah. How would you use lights to to create cozy corners versus make an accent? Yeah, so I would avoid lights that shine down sure. because they just can't, they don't cast very nice shadows. Mm. I prefer up lighting and I think you need a light ideally if it's me having a light behind something that just mm -hmm. gives like a, a a base glow to the space having a height a light kind of mid-level yes. and then you know maybe like three different levels floor um floor lamp and table lamp mm. something like that maybe but yeah just you can as long as you layer the light and yes. you have light at different levels and it's the right shade for the right environment. Then. It really worked with the flat. It just looks amazing. And I loved hearing about, when you were saying about the history of the place with mm. research, the terracotta orange yeah. kitchen. And it just looked amazing oh, thank as you, you go yeah. in. And it, I just thought, wow, if, if I lived there, that's such a talking point, isn't it? Yeah, I think Sheffield, it's, it's an industrial city and mm. it's a very artistic city. Yeah. 
Um, and I just wanted to emulate that because I thought mm. the young professional, if you're going to move to Sheffield, mm. chances are they might be into the kind of artsy side of things. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to take have something that kind mm. of had this warm hub, this warm kind of glow, yeah. um, which I just think is quite nice. And, and you know, it's fun as well. Yes, it's it fun, fun, but in quite like a muted way. Yes. It's quite, it was an earthy colour, yeah. quite tonal. Um, yeah, thank you. It looks amazing. Can you describe your style in three words? Okay, so yeah, it would have to be brutalist because I like brutalistic shapes mm. and confident shapes, big, mm. locked in. And then I'd have to go for earthy mm. because I love earthy tones, terracottas, kind of deep greens, mm. torps, mushroomy colours, something, you know, I think... Yeah, earthy I think is important, it's natural and I think by nature those colours make us feel mm. safe and then elegance. So all of, you know, the brutalist and earthy isn't necessarily the most sophisticated, but I think I do like my designs to feel sophisticated mm. and elegant. So yeah. kind of, yeah, zhuzh it up a little bit and make it, yeah, feel sophisticated at the same time. So brutalist, earthy, sophisticated. I like it. Sophisticated like it. slash elegant. Yeah. <laughs> I will let you have that one. Cool. Cheers. Another question that we've got in is, yeah. what's your favourite era of design? I think it would have to be mid-century. Mid-century mid modern, Lovely. maybe a bit of boho, something like that. Mm. Something like that, but probably it would have to be mid-century. Because things were, things were decorative then, yes. but they were yes. also modern and kind of shapey, geometric mm. as well was decorative and I think there was a nice balance that was struck in that era. Yes, I loved you on the boho though. I love a bohemian home. Yeah. And that is so so warm, isn't it? Having yeah, to go to definitely, a home is yeah. such a good decor choice. Yes. For sure. Yeah. And this is gonna be an interesting one for me to hear actually. We've had this question quite a lot. We had this four times from four different people. What is the scariest part of being on the show? I think naturally it would have to be the moment before judging. Oh, really? So I, I, would, I would have thought before I did the filming that mm. it would have just been being on camera, would have yes. been the scariest bit. But because you're so stressed and there's so much to do, <laughs> you, you don't even think about the camera. That's yeah. secondary to what you're doing. Mm. Um, but it would, yeah, it would have to be the waiting before judging. Yeah. It is so tense and you just, you, you, you never know, like you could have a feeling or an inkling, but you know, some of the designs that I liked the least, mm. the judges liked the most Interesting. and the designs that I loved, the judges had more issues with. So yeah, it's just that moment before judging is terrifying. I could, I could imagine. Very tense. <laughs> Very <can> tense. <laughs> and... Did you find it really in, uh, peculiar? I would say peculiar. I would find it really peculiar being being judged by people that I that you know of and you've heard of, and that celebrity yeah. interior yeah, designers. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. did you feel when you kind of got told it's this person this week? Yeah, it was strange. Like when they said Kelly Hopper, and, yeah. and it's someone that I was just like, bloody hell! Like, I've watched her on Dragons Den, mm. I watched her on like you know loads of different TV segments, seen her you know in, insane interiors mm. huge huge tropical like beach resorts and yachts and mansions and penthouses and yeah. like you know celebrities houses and things like that she's done massive stuff and to see her just standing there it's really surreal <laughs> so surreal but it's also you know there's all these cameras on you as well so it feels a little bit superficial as well sure. But it's, yeah, it's strange. I, I don't know. It's, it's strange. I can imagine. Yeah. I, I don't know how you, you all, manage to say cool. <laughs> it all feels like a bit like you're in a, a dream in a way because it all goes by really quick and it's really intense. I can imagine. And with in de design in general, we had this question about the best way to soften architectural lines, which I think would be quite interesting with the flats because you've had quite yeah. sharp lines there. So... How would you soften any of them in any... So that area? is an interesting question because I tend to highlight architectural lines as opposed to hide them. But um, I suppose one thing that you could do is just kind of paint it all the same colour, yeah. which definitely loses the boundaries. Like if you have a small space, for example, like a cloakroom, 
um, or yeah, like a cloakroom bathroom, small space. By painting that all the same colour, you lose mm. the borders mm. and it just kind of yeah opens up a lot more. So yeah, darker colours and painting over the lines, I think can um, mm. I think can hide them quite well. And also making new new lines. So yeah. you know you could you could paint down you could kind of cut cover up some boxing or something all in one color yes. then finish the paint there so the line is there as opposed to here oh, wow. if that yeah. makes sense but yeah just through paint i'd say just the way that you paint it and the texture that you put on if it's a mirror effect yeah. or a textured effect um yeah that's really good and it's, i think all of us have those areas at our home that we would love to just soften yeah. a little bit with just in general interior design how did you find, and how did you sort of source everything on time? So it was really, really difficult <laughs> sourcing everything on time. Um, and it took a lot of planning and a lot of very quick decision making. Sure. Because if you want to order something online and it's three to five day lead time, yeah, which is course. like most places, that's too late. It's either next day delivery or nothing at all. Because unless you have the design, you know, you'll get the brief. And then unless you have the design nailed in your head that day, if you order something that could come in five days, it might not come yeah. in time. So, uh, yeah, just a lot of planning, quick decision making mm. and, yeah, a lot of stress, sleepless <laughs> nights, <laughs> to be honest. I can imagine that's very stressful. Yeah. But I, I did enjoy it. It was like a proper mission, like a, yes. like a video game almost. It's like trying to get everything just done. Just get everything on on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can good. imagine. That's... Yeah, that mm. I would definitely struggle with that because I'm very indecisive when yeah. it comes to design. You have to be so decisive. Yeah. And I'm indecisive <laughs> I'm indecisive as well. Really indecisive person. Even when like I'm picking from a like a menu in a restaurant, I'm, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to choose. So yeah, it was interesting having to just like bite the bullet with yeah. a lot of things. And I suppose this is a really good question that we've come in that links quite nicely mm. is what is your process and how do you initially come up with an idea for a space? So I think, I did touch on this a little bit before, but mm. the, it's, it's the design process mm. is really important. So you start off collecting images, you start off with the mood board and sketching, just quick yes. sketches. Yeah. Just look at the place and don't think about making a good sketch, just draw ideas mm. and just keep on sketching until you get something. And I think a lot of people think, ah, oh, the idea hasn't come to me, ah, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, you're not doing the design process. Mm. Sketch, look at images, put palettes together, mm. and then the design will come. Will come. It will come. So just, yeah, believe in the design process, lots of sketching, lots of putting things together, lots of research, and mm. just trust Plan. the process, and Plan. it will happen. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely, I struggle with planning. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm an interior designer at all. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be great, actually. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. And where do you start? Say you've got a big open space. So you've seen yeah. our lovely creator studio. It's so big. Yeah. If you've got that in a commercial area or a home, where do you start with redesigning and decorating that space? I suppose height it's going to be an interesting yeah. one to tackle. Also zoning, and I'm yes. not talking about zoning like colour blocking areas. Okay. Zoning is in like, look at the floor plan and decide what you want mm. where. So the studio mm. or sitting area, or you know, we've got some tables, just entrance area, you know, mark out mm. areas and then kind of you zone them. But like, you don't have to zone them, like I said, in like a colour blocking mm. way. It could be with a rug or like a painting or some lighting or a plant or like a little kind of divider and mm -hmm. just get the layout sorted. Because when you just look at a space and you kind of look at it as a whole space, yes. it's a bit difficult, but break it down into areas yes. um, and then work from there. So yeah, it's zoning and that's part of the design process. When, yeah. when you're doing a place, you kind of have the, and you can play around with, with different ideas. You know, you put the studio here, for example, yes. and then the sitting area here, or like a little lounge bit there, yeah. and then swap that around, do, do another drawing with them in different places, yeah. and then just keep on going until you've got one that you like, and then build off that. I love that. I absolutely love that idea of, you know, nothing set in concrete. You can really yeah. keep design yeah. done until it feels right. And sometimes I'll, like, if I want another option for a space, I'll 
start designing it so I'll put something in another place mm. without knowing where the other bits would go. Yes. But you just do it and yeah. see what happens. And then, uh, yeah, so yeah, just zoning and just lots of, uh, lots of kind of uh, plan, view yeah. plan, drawings, top view, lots of drawings like that. And then it should just come. That's such a great tip. Well, thank you so much. I absolutely love that. And I'm <laughs> going to go home now and Perfect. try yeah, to yeah, try yeah. it out. <laughs> well, wow, that is it. Matt, we've got so many questions that we got in and yeah. we've managed to answer them all. So thank you Amazing. so much for coming in. Thanks for having and me. Thank you to everybody for watching. If you like the content that you see, please like and subscribe. And also, if you've got any other questions for Matt, please send us a message, send Matt a message. And we will see, well, we'll see Matt next week in the quarterfinals. Wish me luck. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck and thank you again for thank coming in. Thank you so in. much. Yeah, my pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for watching. See you later.